students welcome back to the class once again in the previous class we discussed about uh, the forms of government and within that we discussed uh, um, unitary form of government and federal form of government so today the last uh, uh, part of uh, the forms of government we are going to complete it and here we will be discussing about uh, parliamentary and presidential form of government parliamentary parliamentary and the presidential form of government this is the last part so this parliamentary and presidential form of government will be discussing with reference to uk as well as usa but whenever we discuss about uk it is uh, very very simple for us to understand with reference to india as well because india also has a parliamentary form of government so let's start with what is parliamentary form of government so parliamentary form of government has uh, two parts the parliamentary form of government uh, is uh, a system in which the executive has two parts that is nominal executive and the real executive the executive in the parliamentary form of government has two parts nominal and the real executive nominal executive is the constitutional as well as just for name sake who does not possess real powers and uh, nominal executive is not responsible to the parliament or accountable to the parliament whereas real executive uh, who is the head of the country executive head of the country elected directly by the people of the country they are responsible to the parliament as well as to the country as a whole they are accountable to the parliament as well so nominal executive in our country is the president and prime minister is the real executive in our country in britain in uk nominal executive british monarch is the nominal executive and the prime minister of britain is the real executive of uh, britain or united kingdom so let us discuss uh, the important features of a uh, parliamentary form of government and side by side we will try to relate with the uh, 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 united kingdom uh, parliamentary features so the first important uh, first important selling features of a parliamentary form of government is differences between nominal and real executive differences between nominal and real executive so in a parliamentary form of government the executive has two parts once again first one is the nominal executive second one is the real executive so all the executive powers all the executive powers are vested on him on him that is the head of the state but does not exercise this power he exercises the executive power vested on the nominal head only on the advice of a prime minister and the council of ministers though though in a parliamentary form of government the country is run in the name of the nominal head country is run in the name of the nominal head but in real sense the power lies in the hand of prime minister and the council of ministers so nominal head is just for name sake he is been uh, entrusted with lots and lots of powers but that power he can use only on the advice of prime minister and the council of minister that is the real executive advises the nominal executive to utilize those powers now the next important feature of a uh, parliamentary form of government is structure of the real executive the structure of the real executive is will within the will so let me tell you what is the will within the will let me tell you what is the will within the will so this is a small circle so here lies the prime minister here lies the prime minister so this is the outer circle outer circle of the inner core circle so here will be the kitchen cabinet zoom kitchen cabinet kitchen cabinet then the outer circle outer circle is the cabinet cabinet ministers cabinet ministers and this is the outer circle council of ministers so one second let me tell you will with the will the inner will here lies the prime minister 
outer circle is the very close ministers those who form the kitchen cabinet very close to the prime minister and the other second circle is the cabinet ministers those who also hold important portfolios and the outer circle is the council of ministers as a whole all the categories of ministers comes under the council of ministers so this is the wheel within the wheel there is a wheel within the wheel so this is all about uh, the second important uh, uh, feature of a uh, parliamentary form of government so kitchen cabinet uh, then again uh, cabinet then uh, again the council of ministers so this is all about the second important part now the third important feature of a parliamentary form of government is there is a very close relation there is a very close relationship between the legislature and the executive there is a very close relationship between the uh, legislature and the executive now let me tell you why it is so because there is no there is a, not at all a separation of power which is there in the presidential form of government that is in usa so here in a parliamentary form of government there should be a good relation in order to continue the work of the government so legislature executive so one very important thing i would like to tell you the executives are born out of legislature so first of all first of all in order to be the mem in order to become the executive prime minister or the council of ministers you need to be the member of the legislature first suppose in britain that is uh, british house of commons the lower house first of all you you have to be elected you need to get elected to the house of commons so whichever party is in majority in the house of commons they form the government and the government chooses the prime minister as well as the council of ministers so prime minister is the executive who is born out of legislature so there should be a very good relation between the legislature and the executive a very friendly and cordial relation should be there between legislature and executive because the leader of the majority party of the legislature forms the government and the others they sit in the oppositions so ministers who are chosen by the prime ministers are responsible and accountable to the prime minister individually and collectively they are accountable to the parliament as a whole and these ministers are given different different various departments to look after so now let us discuss about the ministerial responsibility ministerial responsibility in a parliamentary form of government uh, prime minister is there and council of ministers are there and these ministers are also given various ministries to look after and to what extent they are, they are responsible and to whom they are responsible are they responsible to the parliament or are they responsible to the uh, prime minister that we need to discuss it so individual ministers individual ministers they are responsible to the prime minister individually because prime minister has made them the minister so the in ministry which they are allotted so they are accountable and responsible regarding their ministry to the prime minister and collectively as a whole all the ministers collectively are responsible to the british house of commons or the lok sabha in our country they are accountable to the parliament as a whole so this is the individual and collective responsibility of the ministers so individually the ministers are responsible to the prime minister because they are chosen by them head of the state they are responsible to the head of the state and then they and then other ministers as a whole collectively they are responsible to the collectively they are responsible to the legislature so collectively we can say that the ministers the council of ministers sink and swim together council of ministers sink and swim together so if a vote of confidence is passed against uh, the prime minister the government will dissolve the whole ministry has to resign in the same way we can say that uh, individual ministers if they uh, don't work properly then they may be removed by the prime minister then somebody else will be uh, given in that place but uh, he cannot uh, disobey the prime minister because uh, uh, 
the um, undisputed right to um, allocate portfolios is in the hand of the prime minister nobody can say no to his decisions so that is all now next one next one we have is there is no fixed tenure there is no fixed tenure of the uh, what do you call it prime minister and the council of ministers or we can say that there is no fixed tenure of the real executive suppose for example once elected uh, the normal term of uh, the executive is 5 years somewhere 4 years in india we have 5 years so 5 years so before the completion of the term also they can be they can be removed or a vote of con no confidence if it is passed against the government then the government has to resign so there is no fixed tenure of the prime minister and the council of minister or there is no fixed tenure of the real executives they can they can remain in office until the pleasure till the till they uh, that means uh, till the pleasure of the president if the president is happy that means a constitutional term if the president uh, uh, thinks that the government is in full majority they can continue if the government is not in majority then the president will dissolve the dissolve the government so council of ministers remain in office so long as it enjoy the confidence of the majority majority means numbers numbers should be there more than half 545 is the member in our parliament so more than half will be 274 whichever party whichever government in order to form the government they need to have 274 seats if there is one seat also less then definitely the government has to go government has to go next one in a parliamentary form of government prime minister is the head of the government in a parliamentary form of government Prime Minister is the head of the government who is all in all powerful. The leader of the majority party from the government and the leader of the majority party is the Prime Minister who is appointed by the President. And definitely his office is very very powerful. So the head of the state always acts according to the advice of the Prime Minister. So I told you head of the state. President is the head of the state in our country and in Britain, a British monarch is the head of the state who has to work according to the advice of the Prime Minister and the Council of Ministers. So who is powerful? The real executive is powerful. Next one, very strong position of the Prime Minister. Very, very strong position of the Prime Minister. Now, uh, you know that Prime Minister is the real center of power. And as a head of the government, he exercises lots and lots of power. All the real executives, uh, re executive powers are in the hand of the prime minister. Council of ministers works under his leadership. Council of ministers works under his leadership. He presides over the meetings of the cabinet. All the meetings, whichever are held, cabinet meetings which are held, is presided over by the prime minister. All the decisions taken in the, uh, all the decisions in the cabinet requires the individual approval of the prime minister because without the approval of the prime minister the decision cannot be taken so unanimous decision with the approval of the prime minister is must in the cabinet meeting then the last one is prime minister can get the in a parliamentary system prime minister can get the prime minister can get the Prime Minister can get the Parliament dissolved or we can say legislature dissolved. So that is there. If, uh, if the ministers are not working according to his wishes, then definitely he can dissolve the Parliament. Or if the government is in minority, definitely that time President will dissolve it. But uh, here the cabinet in actual practice, the Prime Minister has a right to advise the head of the state in favor of the dissolution of the legislature dissolution of the legislature he may definitely if he is not happy or he wants a time extra time to uh, prepare for the next election then he can uh, ask the president he can ask the president to get the legislature dissolved that is possible so next one next one the last one is political homogeneity and the secrecy of office political homogeneity and the secrecy of the office now what is this you can you very very simple normally the member of the council of ministers all the members of the council of ministers 
they are from the single party they are from the they follow the single ideology they believe in single ideology they follow the uh, ideologies of uh, the party as a whole the commitment is uh, single and the program of the party as a mandate has to be followed by them as, as all together so homogeneity means unity among the party members unity among the members yes means yes no means no there cannot be differences of opinion within the single party because if i am a member of a party means i i respect and obey and believe in the ideology of the party if i don't like if i'm not happy so i should not be a member of that so once you are the member of the party means you have to believe you have to follow the ideology of the party believe in the decisions taken by the head of the states next one is secrecy of office all the important decisions meeting uh, meetings which ever are held has to be kept secret the party meetings which are held secretly need to be kept secret secrecy is to be maintained uh it doesn't mean that whatever is going on in the meeting you come out and talk to the people let the people know talk with your family members and family members will disclose it to in the public it's not like that yes definitely in a democracy what is been decided by the prime minister council of ministers definitely that will come out in the public domain uh, through a proper channel the party spokespersons are there whom the party has authorized to, to uh, talk uh, in favor uh, talk uh, from the Uh, party side uh, uh, they are the one responsible to uh, discuss or uh, disclose the policies of the government in the press and press through press to the people so secret body cabinet is a secret body we need to whatever is decided in the cabinet meeting it doesn't mean that then and there you go and uh, speak it out it's not possible so you have to maintain secrecy ha huh. the authorized person the person authorized by the prime minister or a party with, to whom they have authorized they come out and they speak out when they are asked to do so so secrecy need to be maintained so this is all about the important features important features of the parliamentary form of government now let us discuss about uh, uh, the same thing uh, with reference to uk with reference to uk Uh, with reference to UK, now parliamentary government in United Kingdom, the basic principle and features which we have discussed as a features of the parliamentary form of government is that applicable here in UK or not? It's very very simple. All those are applicable. So now, uh, first important features with reference to UK is that uh, uh, the Westminster model, Westminster model, the British parliamentary government. british parliamentary government or a cabinet system of britain is also known as westminster model is also known as westminster's model westminster is a seat of the british parliament westminster is a seat of the british parliament the name has been given to the parliamentary system because the cabinet is constituted by the member of the majority party in the parliament that is the house of commons so this is the westminster model the seat is in westminster now as we discussed uh, in, in the seven features of the parliamentary government that uh, uh, two types of executives the nominal executive and the real executive it is similar over here in britain also in britain monarch is the nominal executive and the prime minister is a real executive the country is run in the name of the british monarch and the real power lies in the hand of the prime minister and the council of ministers now next one uh, organizational wheel within the wheel so wheel within the wheel again is there in the uh, 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 parliamentary form of government in britain wheel within the wheel prime minister is there kitchen cabinet is there then again cabinet is there all ministers outside is there then council of minister as a whole now there is a close relationship there is a close relationship between the close relationship between the cabinet and the british parliament it needs to be because prime minister always belongs to the house of commons prime minister of britain always belongs to the house of commons all other ministers must also be the member of either house of the either the house of commons or the house of lords but the prime minister must belong to the british house of commons that is there in case a person who is not a member 
in case a person who is not a member of the parliament is made a minister he is to become a member of either house within a fixed period similar to our country if a, if a person is made the minister he need to be uh, he need to be a member of either house british house of commons or the british house of lords within a stipulated time so this is about a prime minister who is always a person from the british house of commons so most of the important decisions are taken by the prime minister and the council of ministers and uh, similar to our country money bills are introduced in the british house of commons that we all know it so there is always a very good relationship between the prime minister um, cabinet cabinet who is headed by the prime minister so cabinet and the parliament there is a very good relation so this gives the ministers a representative and a responsible character so all together we can understand that if a if a vote of no confidence is passed so then the government has to resign so in a parliamentary government that uh, is very very important if a government uh, uh, does not uh, follow the constitutional norms or if their government is in minority the vote of confidence passed then the government has to resign that is is the ministers responsible for anything which goes wrong not the king or the monarch who is held responsible for this so the ministers are responsible for all actions of the king so simple the next one individual responsibility of the ministers each minister is individually responsible for his conduct as well as for activities of depart department department under his charge simple the department which is given to me i am responsible for that whatever uh, uh, mistake or uh, uh, things which goes wrong i will be responsible for that the ministry which is given to a individual minister must be responsible for that particular ministry so individually they are the ones accountable to the prime minister so next one the same thing again so my teacher my dear students if uh, you if you get a question like uh, uh, explain the salient features of the parliamentary form of government with reference to uk and you have studied only the features of uh, uh, the parliamentary system that will also work that will also work so salient features of the parliamentary uh, parliamentary government is applicable to all the parliamentary system in our in the world as a whole so there should not be a confusion the salient feature is different and the parliamentary feature of uk is different it is not it is same the next one again leadership and a strong position of the prime minister of uk so as you told as i told you that prime uh, prime minister in a parliamentary form of government holds a very very important position so is in the case of so is in the case of british uh, house of commons also there the prime minister is very very powerful the prime minister of britain is very very powerful he holds the most important position in the uh, united kingdom all the administration administrative roles are in his hand king always acts on his advice uh, the cho choice of the minister is his power okay whom to make the minister who is going to be the minister who, who ministries are to be given to uh, the members all these are decided by the uh, prime minister all the portfolios whichever are distributed are distributed uh, on the will of the prime minister or we can say that prime minister has that undisputed right to allocate portfolios and whenever meetings cabinet meetings are conducted in britain that is prime minister presides over the meeting secretary office similar to that all the important decisions uh, uh, meetings policies which are discussed in the cabinet meetings are to be kept secretly are to be kept secretly there should not be any leak leak we can, that we can say that there, uh, any decision should not be leaked out so uh, party representatives are there they are authorized by the government they come and speak in front of the people so ministers they have to take a oath of secrecy that will maintain secrecy of the party and the government so this is all about uh, from the prime ministerial form of government uh, prime minister form of government welcome back to the class once again now the next topic we'll be discussing over here is presidential form of government presidential form of government the chart is given over there presidential form of government is over here 
Okay, now presidential form of government. First of all, what is mean by presidential form of government? So, when there is a separation of power between the legislature and executive, and and in which executive is not responsible or accountable to the legislature, and this type of system is known as presidential form of system or presidential form of government. So here executive is not responsible to the legislature so in the previous section we discussed there is a very good relation between the legislature and executive but here legislature and executive has no close relations legislature is not responsible to executive and executive is not responsible to legislature that i'll discuss you in detail now let me tell you in a parliamentary system election take place and the party which form, party which comes in majority forms the government okay but in a presidential form of government in a presidential form of government election takes place there are two houses in the Briti uh, 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 that means uh, there are two houses in the us parliament which is also known as uh, uh, that means us congress the us parliament is also known as us congress Two houses house of representative is there and the senate is there house of representative is the lower house which consists of 435 members elected directly by the members of the uh, pe that means people of the uh, 50 states and senate is the upper house the members to the senate are elected indirectly by the people of the 50 states indirectly so altogether 100 members are there in the senate now I'm trying to make you understand the relation why it is uh, so different from the parliamentary system. House of Representative, the term of the House of Representative has is sorry, the House of Representative has two years term. The House of Representative term is two years. Every two years elections are conducted. Whereas the Senate, the Senate has a permanent term. That means we can say that Senate is a continuing house like the house which we have in our country, Rajya Sabha. Senate is a continuous body or we can say Senate cannot be dissolved. So, why there is no relation? So, where is the government form? Then who is the executive? From where the executive uh, is born out? So, let me tell you. The president of uh, USA is elected separately. The president of USA is elected separately by a presidential electoral college. The name of the body is PEC, Presidential Electoral College, which is formed every after five years, uh, every after four years. Once they elect the president, uh, the presidential electoral college gets uh, dissolved. So it is not of a permanent term. So here, the House of Representatives and the Senate. They have nothing to do in the election of the president. Though as an individual voter, as an individual voter from their constituency, they can elect the member of PEC. That much they can do. So the executive that is the president is elected by a PEC, which has nothing to do with the House of Representatives and the Senate. So the president is elected separately. Okay, president is elected separately. So this is the difference uh, as compared to parliamentary and presidential form of government. So there is there is uh, there is no close relationship between the legislature and the executive in the presidential form of government. That is why actually what is presidential form of government? Presidential form of government is a system in which the executive is not responsible or accountable to the legislature accountable to the legislature whereas in a parliamentary form of government prime minister is responsible and accountable to the parliament so here they are not accountable so now president in a usa in a presidential form of government there is only one executive there is one executive who holds both the powers of the executive he is the nominal as well as the real executive head of the country. The president of America is the nominal as well as real executive head of the country. 
nominal constitutional head real because he is elected directly by the PEC or we can say indirectly by the people of the country so executive he is very very powerful and he along with his cabinet now the cabinets uh, that means uh, the ministers to whom we call as a consular minister they are not elected they are appointed by the they are appointed by the president whoever are capable and eligible and president thinks that uh, i need the work of that particular person in my ministry he elect, uh, he appoints them the person can be from any party that is something different so uh, they are termed as presidential secretaries that means the ministers to whom president elects sorry appoints they are known as presidential secretaries in our country in a parliamentary system we call them as a, uh, call them as a council of ministers here in a presidential system in usa we call them as a presidential secretaries they are the one to add and advise the president as a whole if they don't work properly if the appointed uh, secretaries they don't work according to the uh, wishes of the president then he or she will be removed he will be removed from the cabinet okay so this is all about this separation of power between legislature and executive which we have already discussed president has nothing to do with the legislature and legis the legislature has nothing to do with the uh, executive so president is the executive legislature house of representative and the senate they are there so definitely whenever any bills are to be passed the whole legislation process takes place in the u.s house of congress so there the presence of a president is not at all possible he is not a member of the parliament so if he wants any of the bill uh, to be passed uh, in his favor then definitely he can take the help of his friends who all are the senators so 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 the question comes over here do the uh, does um the executive has uh, full freedom or we can say that the executive is completely free to do whatever they like whatever he likes in america is there no control over the executive so there is always a checks and balance the term is checks and balance the president definitely is controlled by the legislature because uh, he cannot go against the constitution so if he does anything wrong if he is uh, found to be uh, against the constitution or uh, treason or uh, any uh, anti uh, anti nation activities then definitely he is to be removed and the process through which the president of america is removed is similar to the process which the president of india is removed that is termed as impeachment recently you might have heard about uh, the impeachment process of uh, uh, donald trump so impeachment process so that is there and next one is there um, he cannot uh, declare war without the approval of the what do you call it uh, us congress so definitely there is a checks and balance on both the sides legislature has control over the executive and executive also has control over the legislature that is known as checks and balance so both the houses both the legislature and executive are checked by each other now there is a fixed tenure there is a fixed tenure in a presidential form of government so america the president has a term of 4 years in america the presidential term is 4 years so every after 4 years election to the president is conducted uh, that is uh, presidential electoral college is constituted and they on behalf of the people they elect the, they vote to the presidential candidate so term is 4 years so you can go for a second term also uh, before this Donald Trump, uh, Obama was there, Barack Obama was there. He completed, uh, I think, one term or two term. Okay. The next one we have is, uh, uh, there cannot be a president uh, who can hold the office for more than two terms. Not possible because uh, it's not at all in the country. It is not mentioned in the constitution. Okay. So now few more topics are left uh, regarding the selling features of the presidential form of government. So let me tell you once again uh, the fixed tenure of the president of uh, America, four years. 
but before that also he or she can be removed to the process of impeachment so a slight difference slight dif difference is there regarding the impeachment of uh, the president of america and the pre president of india in a indian system in the indian uh, parliamentary system impeachment process though it is there uh, there both the houses they have the right to um, go with the impeachment uh, motion if rajya sabha uh, imposes allegation lok sabha will investigate if lok sabha imposes allegation rajya sabha will investigate that is there but here in uh, us uh, uh, according to us constitution to frame charges over the president is uh, the power of the house of representative the house of representative only can frame charges and it will be investigated it will be investigated only by the house of the uh, only by the senate the senate only has the right to investigate the charges framed over the uh, president of america that is there now next one the cabinet works you know that uh, i told you cabinet i told you about the cabinet which is formed by the president cabinet works cabinet works as an advisory body of the president the president is there president has uh, what appointed the ministers those who are known as presidents and secretaries and they are to advise the president in the legal matters whenever a president requires their help definitely they must be there so definitely many secretaries are there like uh, foreign ministers are there defense secretaries are there the foreign ministers are there foreign secretaries are there for defense ministers are there which is known as defense secretaries are there so like in india we have number of ministers in the same way those ministries are given to the uh, what do you call it as presidential secretaries appointed by the president so in our country the member of the parliament who form the government and the government allocate government head of the government the prime minister allocates the ministries to the member of the government but here the president he he uh, what do you call it um, uh, appoints the ministers and they are given the ministries who are to who are held responsible for that ministries the last one responsibility of the cabinet members to the president so definitely so uh, cabinet secretary the cabinet ministers are responsible to the president if they don't work properly they will be removed they are given the assignments they are assigned with certain uh, duties and responsibilities and if they fail then definitely they will be removed they will be removed from the office so it completely it is completely in the hands of the president of america to appoint and remove the presidential secretaries and the last one is political homogeneity is not a rule over here political homogeneity is not a rule over here so which is there in the parliamentary system but it is not at all there so all these things we discussed uh, with reference to usa the usa the president of usa is the most powerful person in the world we say so definitely he is very very powerful he is the one who holds the executive powers of uh, the american american uh, that means america and usa is run according to the wishes of the president of uh, america so parliamentary system is also a democratic system presidential system is also a democratic system so america is the oldest democracy and india is also a democracy so both the both the countries are democratic countries the only difference is that we have opted for parliamentary form of government and america has opted for presidential form of government presidential form of government we have a written constitution as well uh, we have a written constitution and us constitution is also a written constitution so almost similar all the important uh, uh, features of uh, the parliamentary and presidential is somewhat uh, similar but there are differences which we have discussed today okay so this is uh, how we have come to the end of uh, this chapter we have completed this chapter as a whole so from this chapter you have to uh, do only four things number 1 what is mean by parliamentary form of government what are the important features of parliamentary form of government uh, and next one what is mean a presidential form of government and the features of the presidential form of government you will be 
asked to answer the features of parliamentary as well as presidential with reference to UK and USA.